Um, when you come into it, we've got pickies across the top for architects, and we've got the, the tree view down the side for engineers. Um, so you can work in this in different ways. Some of this is experimental. We want to actually find out how people prefer to use it. So that's why we're providing different ways of getting into it. Um, then the area in the middle of here is where we have the properties for those objects. And this allows us to, say, search for particular products. Uh, right, I'm sorry, and then on the right, obviously, is the, the a graphics panel where we actually have a, a 3D model of the, the objects that you're looking at. Um, just zooming in on the, the quantities, uh, the properties bit there, you can see that for doors, we have that LOD 200, we have just the height and the width. Um, the properties across here, if you click disregard, it means that we don't care what this property is. Present means that we are looking for a product that has a value in this slot, but we don't care what the value is. So if you're, say, wanting to assess alternatives for insulation, for example, you may just want to look at products that have a new value attached to them. Approximate, there, this is a value we want, plus or minus a certain amount, and then exact means that that's all we want. And You'll also notice down here that we have uh, an AU label. The COBE and US Department of Veteran Affairs obviously use US data, US practice, and they have some names in their schemas that I don't know what they mean. I doubt whether any of you would either. Um, but there are some things that are missing that we think should be there that are necessary for Australian practice, such as your FRLs. Now, no one I'm not aware of anywhere internationally who has a three-part fire resistance level the way that we do. So we have to customise this. So we captured that Australian data as well. And across the top are some buttons. Once you've selected some properties, entered some values, you can search for a product against those characteristics. You can open a template definition. So that's the, the object definition. So this is where a product manufacturer would come in and add additional properties. We can then validate against the template definition. So if you have an existing product, does this still match the current template? So we can actually use this for validation. For example, product manufacturers have put in lots of door handles. How do we find the door handles that don't match an updated definition? So this will go off and find them. Uh, Exporters Kobe, uh, there's interest in uh, picking up on aspects of uh, facilities management and, and Kobe actually provides a very good procedure for doing the event. So we're actually supporting that. And the set name filter and unset name filter there are things that Scott and I have been really used. A window that's exactly 1200 high so we get a list down in the bottom here of windows that are 1200 high. Um, I mentioned some of the, the data here with uh, for an LOD of 500, so this is very detailed information. Uh, we've got some properties that we have uh, specifically for Australia, such as the U-value and the solar heat gain coefficient, I remember this time, Scott, uh, and since transmission, visible transmission and air infiltration. So they're properties that aren't in Kobe, but we thought were necessary or useful for Australian practice. And the next stage of the project, hopefully we'll get some feedback from people such as yourselves on that. Um, we also have, for an LOD 500, the detailed manufacturer's specifications for this product. So we've got the, the SW, well, it's AWS actually, isn't it? We've just changed that to protect the guilty. Uh, detailed product information, you know, series 452, is that, did that you reverse That's the right. number as well? No. Okay. okay. The single blaze, blazing type and so on. So we capture the detailed data at LOD 500. So when you're bringing these in, you know what level of detail you're getting. Um, and we also have, uh, I think the next slide shows the NatSpec data. So we've been going through NatSpec, we pulled out the tables in NatSpec, added that information into the, the objects, and uh, when all of that's... Uh, ended properly, then this will actually interface well with NatSpec as well for those who are NatSpec subscribers. Products that we already have in here, and this is actually a few weeks ago, we might have a few more. Uh, windows, doors, uh, plumbing, fittings, uh, kitchen cupboards as in a, a single object, that all comes in at one piece. Uh, light fittings, 
and wall assemblies. And if we actually go in and look at detail at the, this wall assembly, uh, this is an LOD 400, judging from the name up there. Um, so this gives us the detail, brickwork, cavity, reflective insulation, studs and so on. So we actually have the structure of the wall in here. Now, walls and roofs and slabs are actually system objects in most of the CAD systems and they get treated especially by the software. So you can't actually create a family of walls and then have them work properly. You actually have to modify definitions of existing walls if this is going to work and it works the way that it should. So this, this information will actually embed in the walls that you have in the model and Scott will show this a bit later on. Right, years of architectural training leads to this brilliant design and we use this, the standard library interface and then we add a little button down the bottom that goes off and references the object library. Um, the standard ARCHICAD interface here doesn't actually uh, support all the functionality that we wanted to um, support. Um, so when we do this, when we actually go reference the object library from Revit or ARCHICAD, it knows, number one, what type of product we're looking for, so that reduces the search already, and it also knows which software is making the, the call, so that we can then map from the generic definition to the receiving software. Then when we do a search for a door uh, with a approximate width of, of 900, that brings up two matches from uh, the library down there. Now once we've selected something, we can actually select a door, we actually have two options. If you already have a door in your model and you want the geometries to stay as it is, we can actually attach new properties to that object that's already in your model. So, for example, you want to add information, say, about a, a particular door closer to a door object in the model, we can add the properties for that door closer to the, the door object definition, and then that can get pulled out when you're doing schedules. You're not actually, or you normally wouldn't want to draw all the closers in your 3D model. Uh, the other thing you can do is actually bring in the entire geometry and the properties, and we'll show you that in a minute. Uh, so that brings it in, and then we select it and... I mentioned that uh, we weren't 100% happy with the standard ARCHICAD interface, so your computer programmer, his building is a bit more exciting than mine, um, has actually in implemented a property type browser interface into ARCHICAD and has the, the object library button down there, here. So he's actually implemented this within ARCHICAD to give similar functionality as you'll see when Scott demonstrates the property browser in Revit.